first of all, I'd like to say Athena and Adrian, great job in sharing your stories. It takes a lot of courage. I hope she hears me to stand up here and share her story, and it's so inspirational to all of us. Well, thank you for Mount SAC, uh, Professor Jason Kordek, and the TEDx team for putting this amazing event together. It feels good to be back on my old stomping grounds. And cheers to all of you for being here. You're the real MVP. It's a Sunday. It's NBA Finals Day, and you're here with us tonight. So let's hear it for yourselves. <laughs> I'm here to talk to you about two things today. Number one, how to create our powerful video profile, also known as a video resume that showcases your X factor, also known as a mosaic, keyword today, of your best work. Used to expedite the process of networking, collaboration, booking, hiring, and discovery. I'm also here to talk to you about taking the first step to a passion-filled career, like I did here at Mount Sac many, 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 many moons ago. <laughs> How many of you know what your X factor is? How many of you know what an X factor is? Let's start there, right? <laughs> An X factor is something that every individual and every brand or business has, including all of you in the audience. As an individual, it's your unique talents or skills that set you apart from the rest. Why a company would potentially want to hire you and why would people would want to work with you. As a brand or a business, it's your USP or your unique selling proposition. What differentiates your brand or a business from other brands or business? Not just how to use your product or service, but why they should use your product or service. And knowing your X factor and creating a visual to go with it will expedite the process of people knowing more about you as well as your business. Advertisers know this. This is why they spend millions of dollars on Super Bowl commercials every year or, or commercials throughout the year. Up to $5 million for 30-second commercials. Artists and musicians know this as well. That's why they spend thousands of dollars on music videos every year. They understand the power of video. And it's time for you and I, as everyday people, to understand and reap the benefits of creating a video profile as well. As you guys know, we live in a digital society, a digital world. We get our news from Facebook, we get our restaurant recommendations from an Instagram photo, and we communicate over disappearing messages on Snapchat. So the days of reading over a long page resume with lots of words, or even a long review, is antiquated. People want their information, and they want their information fast. And nothing is faster than the use of a video. They say one minute of video equals to, equates to 1.8 million words. So if you're a musician or if you're a talent, your video profile will contain, of course, footage of your talent. You can't write in a resume or on your LinkedIn profile how great of a guitarist you are, right? As a guitarist, a drummer, a DJ, an actor, etc., your video profile will contain footage of you and your talent. Also, for those of you that are worried that it costs thousands of dollars to produce these videos, every camera phone has an HD camera inside it. As an individual, your video profile will contain not only a list of your accolades or your highest achievements, but it can also include footage of you in your best element. So for example, if you're a personal trainer, it's gonna show you in the gym with your clients motivating them. If you're a teacher, it can show you in the classroom, inspiring the youth and the, and the kids that work with you. It can also include client testimonials. So for example, if you're, an in, you're a personal trainer in the gym, it can include client testimonials talking about how you, you motivated them. Or if you're a teacher in the classroom, your students can speak on your behalf of how you inspired them. Other teachers can speak about how it was to work with you. As a brand or a business, again, capturing in your video profile is your USP or your unique selling proposition not just how people use your product or service, but it's why. So for example, if you're a realtor and you own your own real estate agency, it'll not only show footage of the beautiful homes that you've sold, but it can also include client testimonials talking about why they would want to potentially work with you and your business and not others. We all know the power of word of mouth marketing. How many times have we gone to a restaurant or we've used a doctor or we bought a service just because somebody had told us to? Well, that's the same that you can do with video. Imagine a recommendation coupled with a visual, how that could speed up the process for you. Well, I talked about my first few steps being right here at Mount Sac, and it started here at Mount Sac. In the summer of 99, I was a freshman at UCI studying political science to be a potential lawyer. And because my mom wanted me to be a lawyer. <laughs> Not necessarily what I wanted to do. I went to school and I memorized books, and every day I felt like, you know, 
my career path couldn't match with what I was passionate about. I would go to class, I would memorize books, I felt like I was just studying and studying and not really feeling what I really wanted to do. What I was really passionate about was music. Ever since elementary school, I was the lunchtime DJ at school. And I was still the same height. <laughs> I love playing that song that people would run up to and say, what's the name of that song? I love that song too. See, music can really personify emotions, whether it's making you feel good or making you feel understood. And I wanted to be a part of that process. So what I, was, what, so what I really was passionate about was what I, what I did on the weekends. Going to Unity or all the hip hop clubs, watching all of my favorite artists perform. Or going to the record store and buying that new record to play for my friends or at events. And I also watched music television networks religiously. My true dream was to be a VJ, a video jockey, getting to interview new inspirational artists, getting to promote new music by artists that I thought were great, as well as uh, traveling the country and covering music events. So much that when they had an audition in Hollywood, California to be the next VJ, without telling anybody, I drove all the way to Hollywood, which is a long way from Walnut, California. I stood in line for three hours and actually made it to the top 10. And then a last casting agent's office, she looked at me and she said, you're too short. <laughs> what are you gonna do, hold the microphone over your head? You'll never be on television, you should try radio. And I remember feeling, man, I'm, I, 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 I can't believe I thought this. I can't believe I could thought that I could have a career match with what I was passionate about. I drove in traffic, and you guys know, going on the 60 East or the 10 East, anytime between three or seven, just puts you in bumper to bumper. So I kept repeating what she said. You'll never be on television, you should try radio. You'll never be on television, you should try radio. You'll never be on television, you should try radio. And I thought, okay, I'm just gonna go back to UCI, study political science, be a lawyer, my mom from the Philippines will be proud to tell her brothers and sisters about that, right? Coming from a third world country, you want a lawyer, not a DJ in your family. <laughs> Until I heard the second half of what she said, and it was positive. You should try radio. You should try radio. And I thought, wow, I should try radio. Number one, I could interview inspiration artists. I could promote new music. And it didn't matter what I looked like, because I'd just be talking on the radio. So back in 1999, we didn't have this beautiful thing called the internet. So we had to do a lot of research and like go places to find out information. <laughs> My mom lives a mile down the road at Snow Creek in Walnut, California. And I found out they had a radio station, guess where? Right here at Mount Sac, KSAC 90.1 FM. So I ran to the radio station and I was so amazed because for the first time in my life I saw professional microphones, soundproof boots, students producing commercials. I said, this is what I want to do. And they said, well, you have to take radio broadcasting classes first and radio production. So that summer, without telling anybody, I enrolled into radio broadcasting. And for the very first time in my life, I was excited to go to class. I know a lot of the parents here, you might not want to hear this story. <laughs> But imagine going to class and you're excited because you're learning about how radio got made, how to get a job in radio, and how to produce your own radio show. So eventually, I got the radio show. I got to interview all these artists that I would see on the weekend at all the hip hop clubs, which were emerging stars back then, but shows my age, so Black Eyed Peas, Most Def, Talib Kweli, Common, alongside my icons, A Tribe Called Quest, et cetera, were some of the artists I interviewed for KSAC 90.1 on Third Floor Radio. And I had to have the conversation with my mom. And I told her, I'm going from a UC to a JC. And I'm going from political science to radio television broadcasting. But it was the best decision that I made in my life. From that moment, I started producing concerts. I started learning everything I could about the music industry, interning everywhere. Just wanted to learn the basics. Eventually, with all the concerts that I had produced and all the events that I had produced, I met the creators of MySpace.com. Two guys that said they want to create a digital platform to help artists connect with their fans. And I thought it was genius. They asked me what my marketing ideas were. I said, I'm going to first promote my radio show. <laughs> and all the artists that, were, that I interviewed at KSAC 90.1 and then eventually Cal State Fullerton were some of the first artists on MySpace.com. I spent the next 10 years there helping launch and promote MySpace.com throughout the world. We became the number one website in the world with over 200 million users worldwide, revolutionizing the music industry. 
and I had my dream job. I got to interview new artists that I thought were inspirational, like Justin Bieber and Drake. I got to produce concerts for artists like Jay-Z, Rihanna, Kendrick Lamar. And I got to promote new music from Justin Timberlake, Bruno Mars, and John Legend. So after a decade there, I was asked by Liftoff Pictures to create a video profile. And while I was reluctant to do it at first because I like interviewing artists, I don't really like sharing my own story, I'm really glad I did for three reasons. Number one, I was able to trace back and reflect upon my history and my first few steps that began a few feet from right here at KSAC 90.1 as a college radio DJ. Secondly, I was able to utilize that video profile to share with people that I potentially wanted to work with, including television networks. And so now I host and produce a music television show that's available in 15 million homes via DirecTV, Time Warner Cable, Sony, Roku, etc. via Mixed TV. Close to 20 years later, when I was told I would never be on television because I'm too short. <laughs> and lastly, and most importantly, by creating that video profile, it gave me the inspiration to create our company called My Divio, standing for My Video Profile. And now we're the largest network and directory of video profiles in the world, and we were just acquired. I've helped dozens of brands find the right influencers for their brand campaigns. Small businesses win new clients. TV shows, festivals, and live events find the right artists for their programs. Help nonprofits raise money for their foundations, as well as individuals get hired or booked all through the sharing of a video profile. So it, ins it inspires me to encourage all of you to create a visual to share your own journey. So I leave you with a couple of things here today that I wish when I was a college student, kind of roaming around trying to figure it out, sitting in those seats right here. Number one, your career path is a lifelong journey. It's not one job. So when you don't get that job you want, like for me as a VJ, you can still keep going because you're a part, it's your own journey. It's also not one major. You might major in one thing, you might switch your majors, you might upset your parents a little bit. <laughs> you might graduate in one major and have a career in the next, but that's okay. Your career life is also not one destination. I'm still on my journey. Adrian will tell you he's still on his journey. Jason Kordick, professor, will tell you they're still on their lifelong journey. It's, an, it's not one destination and it's ongoing. And if I could leave you with two things today. Number one, know what your X factor is. So when you walk into a room, you can walk in confidence and know what makes you different, what makes you stand apart from everybody else and all of the crowd, whether it's yourself, your brand, or your business. And I challenge you to make a visual for it, to make a video for it. And maybe you just share it with your family or friends, but see how beneficial it could be. And most importantly, like Martin Luther King said, you don't have to see the entire staircase. Just take the first step, like I did here a few steps ago at Mount Sac. Thank you, guys.